Hey gamers, Chris here. So a couple weeks ago I did a video on the Beastmaster and I did a Beastmaster build and one of the things I did with that build is I gave it a wisdom of 10. And the reason I gave it a wisdom of 10 I told you is number one, because we weren't multi-classing out so we didn't need to meet the minimum requirement for that. And number two, because I said that the best ranger spells don't use wisdom. So what spells are those? Let's talk about that today. Welcome to Tree and Monk's Temple. So let's deal with this one level at a time. So I'm going to start with my favorite first level spells for rangers. And there's quite a few. Rangers have a great first level spell list. But my favorite first level spell for a ranger is Hunter's Mark. Uh, because Hunter's Mark is really the primary way that a ranger does damage that makes it comparable to other damage dealing classes. It's a bonus action casting. And it's very, very similar to the Hex spell. If you have the Hex spell with your Warlock, Hunter's Mark is almost the same spell. But one of the ways that I think Hunter's Mark is better is the damage type. Because Hex is going to do necrotic damage, while Hunter's Mark does the weapons damage type. So if the weapon is magical, you're very, very seldom going to face resistance and almost never face immunity. Uh, it has a good duration. You can change the targets using a bonus action after your first target goes down. So this is a spell you can cast once and you can keep it going for quite a while. Now one thing about Hunter's Mark is it does use your bonus action. So if you want to play a build that is bonus action hungry, like a two weapon fighter or a crossbow expert, there's going to be conflict. But long as you're using a single weapon and you're not using the crossbow expert feat or any other feat like polar master that can also interfere, then you're going to find that Hunter's Mark is an easy way to add consistent damage to your attacks. Uh, and that's why it's just my favorite spell for first level for rangers. Now my second favorite spell for first level for rangers is Absorb Elements. What Absorb Elements does is, is it's a reaction and whenever you take energy damage you can use your reaction to get resistance to that damage type after you know what the type is. So in that way it's a lot better than something like a protection from energy because with protection from energy you need to know beforehand what kind of damage you're likely to take. But now if you're hit with a fireball you can use your Absorb Elements to grant yourself that resistance to fire immediately. The other thing I like about Rangers and Absorb Elements is that Rangers are actually one of the classes that can really make use of the secondary portion of Absorb Elements. And that is, on the following round, the next time you hit something with a melee attack, it will also add an additional d6 damage of that damage type that you just absorbed. Uh, so it is good for Rangers for defense and okay for rangers for offense. Uh, it's mostly a defensive spell. The main thing is the resistance to damage, which is just a lovely thing to do, and rangers don't have a lot to do with their reactions. So there's not really a lot of conflict there either. A great spell to take, uh, always one of the ones I look at with a ranger. My third favorite spell at first level for rangers is Goodberry. Goodberry is one of the best healing spells in the game, very underrated as a healing spell because it gives you 10 points of healing to 10 different targets. It's like 10 little one hit point healing potions. Uh, I think it's a lot better than Cure Wounds and I think it's at least potentially better than Healing Word. And I won't get into again whether you can feed a good berry to somebody who's down because there's debate on that. Uh, if you can, then it becomes especially good. Uh, if you can't, I still think it is a good spell just for the total number of points it heals. And of course, it can nourish up to 10 people per day. Uh, though that's usually not a problem. You're a ranger, you can probably provide most of the time. But if for some reason you can't get to rations, or rations are an issue, or maybe it's the weight of the rations that's the problem because you're on a long trek and maybe there's not a lot of hunting, Goodberry can provide that way as well. But the main thing with Goodberry, for me, is 10 hit points of healing with one first level spell. They last 24 hours. Now it was mentioned to me by somebody, and I think this is a great idea, that you should use all spell slots remaining before a long rest on casting good berry, and you will have those good berries still for another 16 hours after your long rest is done. Uh, so I think that's a strong tip and uh, another way to make good berry even a better spell. The final spell I want to mention at first level is Zypher Strike. 
Uh, and Zypher Strike, I think, is really good if you are playing a melee character uh, because it can add a lot of maneuverability to your character. Now, it does use your concentration, so you cannot use this at the same time as you use your Hunter's Mark. But if you are finding that it is difficult for you to get where you need to go, Zypher Strike is a great way for you to do that. It is a bonus action to cast, and after you cast it, you don't provoke attacks of opportunity, so you can move wherever you need. And then once during the duration of the spell, you can make an attack, and whether that attack hits or misses, uh, you will get an additional 30 feet of movement till the end of your turn. And that 30 feet of movement is the kind of movement that isn't provoking attacks of opportunity. So it really allows you to get to places where you normally wouldn't be able to get. Like maybe the enemy caster that's hidden behind a bunch of strong brutes. And that attack, if it hits, will do an additional d8 damage as well. This is usually something you're going to use all in one round. Although it lasts for a minute, normally it's about getting from one location to another. So you're going to cast the spell, you're going to make that attack, you're going to do some extra damage, you're going to get an additional 30 foot movement, and now you've got 60 feet of movement without provoking attacks of opportunity, and then you can drop the spell and raise a hunter's mark the following round. Uh, so I think for a melee ranger, this is a strong option to provide good maneuverability on the battlefield. So let's talk about our second level spells. Second level spells are another level of spells I think are really good for rangers. I had a lot of trouble picking the order on this one, but my favorite second level spell for rangers is Healing Spirit. Now, Healing Spirit, a lot of tables don't allow it because they think it's broken. I have previously argued that I don't think it's broken. I do, however, think it is a very good spell. It can heal just a ton of damage between combats for your party, uh, and for your entire party. And if you are something like a Beastmaster, remember this is also going to heal your companion as well. Furthermore, you can use it in combat to provide 1d6 points of healing. And remember, you can move your healing spirit on your turn, which allows you to move it by a character that needs it so that they can get consistent healing uh, through the combat. Now, this also uses your concentration, so you're not doing it at the same time as a Hunter's Mark. So I'm not doing it in combat most of the time. Most of the time when I use a Healing Spirit, it's after the combat is over. My second favorite second level spell for Rangers is Pass Without Trace. Pass Without Trace I think is a terrific spell. And I really actually had to think about whether Healing Spirit or Pass Without Trace was my favorite. Uh, but Pass Without Trace gives everyone in your party a plus 10 stealth bonus. Now you just need to understand how huge a bonus a plus 10 is. If you think about a rogue with a 18 dexterity uh, and expertise in stealth, they would have about a plus 10 bonus at level 7. Uh, so that's how good you make everybody in your party on top of any skill they already possess. So even your characters who are facing disadvantage because of heavy armor still are going to be able to pass most stealth challenges once you've cast a pass without trace on them. So you basically turned your entire party into stealth experts. With the duration of one hour, it should be plenty to get through that area you needed to sneak through. My next favorite spell for second level for rangers is Lesser Restoration. Because Lesser Restoration is just so useful in so many situations. If anybody is blinded or deafened or paralyzed or poisoned, Lesser Restoration will get them out of it. I keep getting told how amazing the Hold Monster spell is because the Paralyzed condition is so debilitating. It is really debilitating, but you can remove it automatically with a second level spell. Now, Lesser Restoration isn't a spell I expect to cast a lot as a Ranger, but it's nice to have because when you do need it, it can have a huge impact. And the final spell I want to talk about for second level Ranger spells is Dark Vision. Dark Vision doesn't use your concentration, it has an amazing duration. And people will make entire racial selections based on who has dark vision and who doesn't. So you can play your variant human, you can get your bonus feet, and then for the cost of one spell slot, you can match everybody else's dark vision in the party. Uh, so I think that's a very useful spell to have. Of course, not useful to every ranger, but remember, you can cast it on others as well. So let's talk about third level spells now. Now, I don't think that the third level spell list is the ranger's best level, uh, but there are a couple standouts. The biggest standout for me is Conjure Animals. Conjure Animals is a fantastic spell. This spell can be an absolute game changer depending on what creatures you get. 
you can get up to 144 hit points worth of giant frogs all over the battlefield, taking up spaces, restraining enemies, eating up enemy attacks, and that doesn't even count the potential 8d6 plus 8 damage per round. That's just one option from the spell. Now this spell has some limitations because the DM picks the creature. And depending on your situation, some creatures might not work out as well for you as others. But if you have an action available and you want a great battlefield control spell that can also do damage, Conjure Animals is a great spell. And a good spell for rangers to pick as a third level option. My second favorite spell for rangers at third level is Water Breathing. Now, water breathing is normally a ritual. Rangers can't do rituals, so this means you have to use a spell slot to do water breathing. I still think it is a good spell, especially if no one else has access to it. First thing to note is, I think it's a lot better spell than water walking. And water walking might be possessed by other party members, but water breathing is better. It lasts for 24 hours, and you can give it to all the party members, including the familiars, everything. And so basically, by using one spell slot, you can give everybody water breathing all day, every day. So I think despite it not being a ritual, I think it's still a good spell for rangers to pick. So let's talk about rangers fourth level spells. And I do think there are some lovely fourth level spells out there. The first and my favorite is Guardians of Nature. And I used Guardians of Nature for the Beastmaster and it did have a significant impact on that character's damage. So it's a bonus action to cast and then you're going to pick one of two forms. One of the forms is gonna give you advantage on strength based attacks one of the forms gives you advantage on dexterity based attacks. So no matter what kind of ranger you are, you can make use of this spell. If you pick the one that gives you advantage on strength based attacks, you're also gonna do an additional D6 of force damage on each attack. Very few things are resistant or immune to it. And secondly, you get some movement bonuses. If you choose the dexterity form, you're going to get some extra hit points, you're going to get advantage on your constitution saves, and the area around you is difficult terrain. So the strength one is more offense based, the dexterity one is more defense based, but either of them are giving you advantage on your attack. So they're both boosting your offense quite a bit as well. My second favorite spell for fourth level ranger spells is Conjure Woodland Beings. Uh, again, the DM is going to pick the type of creature you get, uh, but the lists are much smaller here. And in some cases, not very many options at all. So you may end up having a lot more control over what you get. Furthermore, compared to conjure animals, a lot of these creatures are less intrusive. They're smaller. A lot of them have ranged attacks. A lot of them have spell casting. Uh, so there are a number of reasons why conjure woodland beings is a higher level spell than conjure animals. Now, when you cast this, there's always the possibility you could get eight polymorph spells from it. But even if you get, say, a couple dryads, that's still 60 good berries you can get through this spell. That's 60 points of healing. That's on top of the other things the dryads can do for you, like a couple entangles, a couple pass without traces. If you get quicklings, they can be a true flurry of blow against your enemies. Uh, so there are a lot of good options here. And because there's more spell casting, less intrusive, uh, more ranged attacks, I think it's a good summoning spell should you get the chance to cast before combat. So let's talk about our fifth level ranger spells. And my favorite fifth level ranger spell for rangers is Swift Quiver. Now I've talked about Swift Quiver before, specifically that I didn't think it was a good idea for a bard to become a primary archer instead of a primary spellcaster and try to get around that by taking this as magical secrets. I don't think this spell alone is gonna turn you into a good archer. But rangers already have some good things making them good archers. Like, for example, how about the archery combat style? Uh, but add on to that, we cast this spell as a bonus action, and then on following rounds, we can use our bonus action to attack two times more. So with our longbow, now we're attacking four times around with this. So if you are playing an archery ranger, then this is a perfect capstone for your character. The real capstone for that character. It really brings you into the same realm of damage that you would expect a fighter to be able to do with their arrows, uh, though it does take a round of setup. So don't get me wrong, fighters still are probably better archers overall than rangers, uh, but rangers are getting some other stuff as well. We still have a lot more spells beyond Swift Quiver, but Swift Quiver certainly closes that gap a lot. But don't feel bad, melee rangers, because at fifth level spells, you get Steel Wind Strike. Steel Wind Strike is going to allow you to do up to 60, 10 force damage to up to five targets. That's potentially 30d6 points of damage. There's no save for half, but you do have to hit. 
But here's the thing, Steel Wind Strike doesn't use your concentration. So you, we can be using our Guardians of Nature to give us advantage on every single one of those attacks. So we can expect to do the best part of 30d6 damage with this spell. A nice use of a 5th level spell for a melee ranger. The final spell I want to mention on the 5th level spell list is Commune with Nature. Again, this isn't a ritual for us, but man, does it give you a lot of good and very specific information. Where is that lich? What spells does he have? What minions does he have? We get to pick what the information is that we receive. So this is really what we wanted from Primeval Awareness. We do get it eventually. We have to use a spell slot to get it, uh, but it sure does deliver amazing information. So I've listed off 15 great ranger spells. Uh, unfortunately, with a ranger, you're generally only going to get 11 spells. You're going to get some bonus spells with the Xanathar's rangers, but if you're playing a hunter or a beastmaster, you're going to have to narrow the list I just mentioned to 11. How many of those spells rely on wisdom? None of them. Zero of those spells. All my favorite ranger spells don't rely on wisdom at all. So it doesn't matter that we're not raising our casting stat. Our casting stat isn't doing anything for us. It's not affecting our spells known and it's not affecting all our best spells and how they're cast. Most rangers I play to level 20 would have no spells that rely on wisdom. Now I am not saying that wisdom is useless for rangers. Uh, your perception is based on wisdom. Your wisdom saving throw comes up reasonably often. There are good reasons why you wouldn't want to have a bad wisdom score. I'm just saying this is true of all characters. All characters want good perception. All characters want good wisdom saves. Uh, so there's no special reason why a ranger needs to bump it up unless they're going to multi-class. So what if you are playing one of the rangers from Xanathar's? Let's just do a little bit of highlights of the good spells on those lists. Uh, so Gloomstalker, I think, is the most powerful ranger in the game. It gets so much right at third level. Why don't we throw a bunch of great spells on there too? Because they do. The two big standouts for me on that list are, number one, Rope Trick. Rope Trick is a fantastic way to take a safe, short rest. Also, not wisdom-based. Other thing, Improved Invisibility. Wow, Improved Invisibility is a terrific spell for rangers. Now, with the Gloomstalker, it might be a little redundant, because if creatures are viewing you with their dark vision, they can't see you anyway. You already have effective Improved Invisibility. But if you're being seen with any other kind of vision, Improved Invisibility is fantastic, of course, because it's great for defense, and it gives you an advantage on your attacks. Then we get the Horizon Walker. What does the Horizon Walker get? How about Misty Step? Terrific spell, second level. This will kind of make Zypher Strike kind of pointless for you because Misty Step is just so much better. Then eventually we get Haste. Haste is a spell I would love to have for my Ranger. And finally, we're going to get Teleportation Circle, a super useful utility spell. What about the Monster Slayer? Got, well, i got to be honest. The Monster Slayer, to me, is the least impressive of those Rangers, and their spell list is the least impressive to me as well. There's only really two spells on their list I think are reasonably good. Protection from good and evil is okay, and Banishment is okay. Uh, thing, of course, is Banishment is going to rely on your Wisdom. There is one case where you've got a decent spell that is definitely going to be on your list if you're playing a Monster Slayer that is going to rely on Wisdom. But other than that, none of them do. So I'm curious what your favorite ranger spells are. Are there any I missed that you think are fantastic? Uh, there are other good ranger spells I didn't mention. These are just my favorites. Uh, so tell me what your favorites are in the comments down below and why. And then until next time, I'm going to sit back and relax and I'm going to have some fun because D&D &D is for everyone. Thanks guys. And I'll see you next time.